ready? Let's grill it. So I'm gonna make a turkey burger as well. I'm actually going to uh, top mine with some goat cheese, and then I'm going to make a honey, mustard, and Meyer lemon sauce. So I'm gonna start with some honey, and then some Dijon mustard, and then I'm gonna take some Meyer lemons. Now Meyer lemons, um, you might not be able to find them uh, all year round or you know where you live, but if you can't, that's okay, because you, you can sort of emulate the flavor by taking a lemon and some orange, because it really tastes like a lemon that has been kissed by an orange. I'm gonna squeeze the lemon juice. I'm gonna take a, uh, a strainer so I can actually catch the seeds. A little salt and pepper. I think what I'm gonna do is take uh, another lemon and just kind of get some zest in there too, because the zest really gives it a lot of flavor. So I'm gonna uh, assemble my turkey burgers. This is just ground turkey. What I like to do with my burgers is I just like to uh, keep them uh, actually nice and pure. Just uh, the ground turkey, some salt and pepper, a little bit of uh, canola oil or vegetable oil on the outside, and then we let them grill. All right, so now I'm gonna take a little bit of canola oil and brush the canola oil right on top of the burgers. A little salt and pepper on both sides. And we can get these on the grill. So I am also gonna toast my hamburger rolls. That's the way to do it. Gotta do it, don't you think? <laughs> Definitely. All right. Now, the, uh, the bun shouldn't really take too long. I mean, literally, you know, maybe 30 seconds. You have to be really careful, depending on how hot your grill is. All right, so I'm gonna turn these now. And that's what you wanna see. Nice and crusty on the outside. Let them finish cooking. So I'm gonna take, uh, on the bottom of our buns, I'm gonna take a little bit of our honey mustard my lemon sauce. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, it's really pretty, and it tastes really good. It's a little sweet, a little spicy, a little citrusy. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna actually start putting a little goat cheese on the burger now, and let it start to warm up on the grill while the rest of it cooks through. All right, I think these are done. I'm gonna put some of our, our sauce right on top. And for some uh, freshness and a little bit of crunch, watercress. There we go. Yeah, I, to me that's like perfectly wow, cooked. Wow, Cooked all the way through. Meaty but at the same time, it's still a little juicy. Mm. Give it a shot there. Okay. Mm. That is juicy and delicious. And the goat cheese comes out, it's so fresh, but that, the slight sweetness. The honey and the mustard, yeah. I mean, to me, that, to That's me it what works. makes it. It works well with the goat cheese. It's delicious. I'm actually gonna do a little French-inspired thing. It's a play on chicken cordon bleu, which is usually ham and cheese inside a chicken and then fried. What I'm gonna do is take some of that inspiration, but I'm gonna grill it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pound this chicken and I just put a little bit of water on both sides of the chicken so it doesn't stick to the, uh, to the plastic wrap. I'm just gonna carefully pound it out and this will actually help the chicken cook very evenly. I don't wanna pound it too thinly. A lot of times, like, it, like a classic chicken pyrite is really, really paper thin. I wanna have a little bit of texture to my chicken. When I bite into it, I actually wanna be able to taste the chicken as well. As you can see, it's gonna be nice and even here. All right, so I'm gonna put my chicken breast on the grill here. I season this with a little bit of canola oil and salt and pepper, and that's it. Just gonna make sure that it's nice and even, high heat. We just wanna get a nice sort of sear on top of the chicken breast. Wow, you got that nice and thin. Oh yeah. And you can see how quickly the, uh, the chicken is gonna cook here. Uh, it's almost cooked all the way through. I mean, when I turn it over, it's gonna just be a couple more minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it to the indirect part of the grill. Okay, I got a nice crust on the outside there, which is exactly what I want. The other thing I'm gonna do is actually put some lemons on the grill, because I love when you grill citrus. It gives it that sort of nice roasted uh, citrus flavor, and I'm gonna make a vinaigrette out of this. Oh, that sounds great. You get some of that smokiness, and the juice comes out easier, right? Exactly right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just a very thin slice of prosciutto, and actually, you know, they'll slice it very nice and thin for you. I'm just gonna just put a layer of prosciutto on top, and then I'm gonna take my triple creme cheese. Now this stuff is really strong. Um, has fantastic flavor. Is it kind of like a brie? It's like a brie with a lot more flavor. It actually has the texture of brie. Here, it, it tastes a little bit. But it's, uh, wow, yeah, that's got, that's got some it, kick. It's, it's definitely pungent. Oh, that's beautiful. That's gonna be great on that chicken, Bob. Yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> ham, ham and cheese on chicken, you know? It's a classic combo, but you've, uh, you've done it up in a new way. Exactly. All right, so I'm just gonna put our cheese on top. As you can see, I have it on the indirect heat, mm -hmm. okay? I started on the direct heat, got a nice sear. Now I'm gonna let it cook through and let the cheese and the prosciutto melt. Take a look at our lemons. Starting to get nicely grilled. I'm gonna 
take a little bit of arugula and just put a little bit of arugula on top. It's kind of like a, you know, a salad on top of your entree. Extra virgin olive oil. And just squeeze some of this roasted lemon on top. Okay, and a little salt and pepper. I'm gonna let Mark give this a try. All right, Mark. Oh man, Bobby, that looks beautiful. This is all you. Now it's a pretty strong flavored cheese. Um, I don't know if that's like to your liking, or would you rather something a little bit more mild? No, it's perfect, Bobby. It adds some some richness and earthiness, and with that little peppery arugula on top, it's beautiful. That oh. cheese is good. I'm not taking credit for the cheese, because I did not make the cheese. <laughs> it, is, it is good on that chicken. People ask me all the time, like, how do you how do you cook corn in the grill? How do you roast corn? I mean, one of the most important things is that you soak the corn in some water, just some plain water. You know, tap water is fine. Whatever you like to use, just soak the corn in the water. But before you do that, you want to make sure that you take the silks out because they're really not edible. And then you're going to leave a little bit of the husk to protect the kernels. Okay, so you take it all the way down, take out all the silk. Take a couple of the husks off, some of the outside husks, and then you leave the rest on to protect it. You just put it back into the water, and you let it soak for a good maybe 15 to 20 minutes. Three things are going to happen. You're actually going to cook the corn, and the moisture is going to help keep the corn really nice and moist. You're going to get a little bit of the, uh, the charred flavor from the corn, and then all the, all the natural sweetness of the corn is going to come out to the top, and you have actually a little caramelized flavor on there because you're cooking it directly on the grill. You want to put this on about medium heat. This is going to take about I would say about 20 minutes. Now I can start to make the, uh, the flavored butter for the corn. Corn's on the grill. A couple more minutes to go with that. We have some unsalted butter here, and you want to make sure it's pretty well softened. Just put this in the food processor. And then just some fresh dill. Put a lot. You don't want it to just to taste like butter. You want to taste, you want, the, you want the butter basically holding the dill together. Mm, love that smell. Salt and pepper. And in no time, you have a compound butter. Let's let that go and we'll go get the corn. This is what you want to see with the corn, okay? Want it to be nice and tender here. Still very nice and moist. You can see that the, uh, the corn husks actually protected it from the grill, but also kind of it's gonna it's gonna give it that smoky charred flavor. Okay, let me show you how this is supposed to work. Let's take a brush, take some of your dill butter. You just want to slather your dill butter right into the corn. Hey everybody, I'm Bobby Flay, and today we're making burgers. Now I think of burgers as the quintessential sandwich. Each component must be treated with the utmost respect to get the perfect result. Now at my burger place, Bobby's Burger Palace, I do a signature burger called the Crunch Burger. It's a burger with double cheese and potato chips on the burger for that extra crunch. It's the best burger there is. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually make a burger and uh, let me just show you how I do that. Usually about uh, six or seven ounces of, of chopped meat. 80% meat to 20% fat is what I like to use because I like to have a little flavor in my burger and the flavor is gonna come from the fat. Tuna or salmon patties also make a great crunch burger. And here's a little trick that I do. I just make a little well with my thumb in the middle of the burger and then when the burger cooks, it actually comes back to shape. Otherwise, you're gonna have this big sort of hump on the burger, and then what happens is people take the back of their spatula and they press it down to get it back to the shape, and that's when you lose all the juiciness. We're gonna season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. And then I'm just gonna brush it with a little bit of uh, light oil, just so it doesn't stick to the grill. I'm gonna find a hot part of the grill, and drop it on, just like that. And I like to turn my burger one time, and the reason why is because you can see you get that nice crust on the outside of the burger. Let's talk about how we're gonna garnish our burger. Now, this is all optional, but let's do the classic. A slice of 
beautiful beefsteak tomato, a thin slice of red onion, and then some lettuce. A good crunchy lettuce, something like romaine works really well. All right, so now, cheese. This is actually gonna be a Monterey Jack, and I'm using two slices of cheese. I always make, I always use double cheese, especially when I'm making a crunch burger. The key to cheese is melt the cheese completely. It drives me crazy when I go to a burger place and they don't melt the cheese. There's something about melted cheese on a burger, to me, that makes the burger. And one more thing, we're gonna make a little horseradish mayonnaise. We're just gonna take a good quality mayonnaise, and then a good amount of horseradish, and some salt and pepper. Just mix this up. Okay, our burgers. I'm gonna take a little bit of our horseradish mayonnaise right on top. And then a couple of our potato chips. Press it down slightly. Can you start to hear the crunch? There it is. Crunchification at its best. Mmm, that's a good burger. Hey everybody, today we're grilling some Spanish food. We have uh, some grilled shrimp with uh, toasted garlic and thyme and red chili vinaigrette. But we're going to uh, just rub these a little bit in some fresh garlic, some red chilies, and some fresh thyme, and a little bit of olive oil. We're gonna make that mixture in this bowl here. Fresh thyme, fresh garlic, red chilies, some salt and black pepper some olive oil. Just mix this up a little bit. And we're gonna take our shrimp, and we're gonna brush on our, I call this an automatic marinade, because basically we're just gonna brush it on and then grill it. We're not gonna let it sit for very long. Red chilies, garlic, and fresh thyme. Let's go to the grill. Whenever I'm cooking shrimp on the grill, I like to put them on skewers so we don't have to chase each individual shrimp around the grill. Shrimp on the grill. All right, now while the shrimp is cooking, I'm just gonna make a little uh, garlic oil and at the same time, we're gonna make some garlic chips. So we have some uh, olive oil that I'm just gonna heat very slowly. We don't want it to come to a boil or anything like that. We only want it to get to about 275 degrees because we're actually gonna take some, some uh, very thinly sliced raw garlic, okay, paper thin. Do you ever see the movie Goodfellas when they're in the prison and they're slicing the, uh, the garlic with a razor blade? That's what you wanna get here, okay? And we're gonna let the, uh, the garlic slowly poach and it's actually gonna get a little crispy and we'll be able to use the garlic oil and the chips at the same time. All right, let's take a look at our shrimp here. Oh, it looks nice. Give it up for those shrimp, baby. Take a look at this garlic. See how it's starting to sizzle around the edges like that? It's gonna get nice and brown on the outside and uh, you can have a nice toasted garlic chip to, uh, to garnish our grilled shrimp with. Lots of shrimp. And then we have our garlic oil that we cooked uh, the garlic chips in. So we're just gonna pour a little bit right over our grilled shrimp. And then our garlic chips. Fresh herbs. And don't forget, you want a little nice crusty bread to go because when all the shrimp are gone, there's gonna be some of that garlic oil on the bottom and you just wanna sort of hook it up with the bread or a shrimp. 